Well, here's a little thing for you. It's a stylus tracking gauge, and this registers the track force. And I've had it on a crapogram this afternoon, actually, and would you believe it was nine grams? Now, the crapophone is not adjustable. You've had it. What you've got is what you've got. But with these old BSRs, there is usually some way of adjusting it. You see, this counterweight thing is what it seems to be on this particular motorboard. I think it's a P182 from memory. It's fitted with an SC12H ceramic cartridge. A typical sort of thing that BSR used to use. There was one that tracked at a lesser pressure called a 12M from memory and you do come across those. Now, ideally this thing tracks best at about uh, between 3 and 5 grams I seem to remember. So put the tone arm on there and you can see that it actually tracks at 4.27 this one. 4.28 somewhere around there. So we're not doing badly and that means that uh, you can play your records to your heart's content really on one of these things and um, it won't cause any undue wear. Now all I will say about BSRs is that some of them were made right at the end. They were this shape, had the two mounting screws that you screw down everything, but there was a nasty little rotary sort of switch here that did uh, your 33 off and 45. Now those things you cannot adjust. What you've got is what you've got. And surprisingly enough, a very similar mechanism to those used in the last gasp, which did away with this metal motorboard, seemed to me to use very much the same innards. Only the end of the toe arm is different. Blech. And uh, of course there's a crappy belt drive as well, usually. What I used to do with those when I encountered them back in the day, as it were, was to simply get the thing out of it, throw it away. If the cartridge was an SC12H, keep that, either order another motorboard or go down the dump and you'd invariably find an old radiogram or a music centre or even an earlier Amstrad tower system with a deck like this in it, and you'd take it home, swap a few things over, and you'd be good to go again. And for the first time ever, the tower system might be able to play 78s as well with the uh, usual flip-over stylus. This is something else that you can't get with the crapophone, you see. Now, with the stylus this way round, you can play your long play and single records on it. But if you flip it up the other way, you'll see there that there's a little 78 appears. And you're then quite safe to play 78s to your heart's content. In fact, it'll be better, really, to do it on something like this than it would do on a lot of the really old equipments, because... Uh, some of those tracked very heavily indeed. <laughs> you know, sort of an uh, anvil resting on the end of the tone arm comes to mind. But uh, that's not to say they weren't nice sounded sets that were nicely built, mind you. So there you are, that's a little bit about these. Um, I'm not too careful with this needle. You may have heard me go because this needle is worn and needs to be replaced for the thing to work really nicely. So there we are, and the uh, stylus tracking force gauge, um, you know, be it the sort of a swinging needle or a little uh, balance thing or like this digital, is a fantastic thing to have. Uh, just make sure it comes with a recalibrate thing, <laughs> otherwise you could be fooling everybody all of the time, including yourself. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon.